All right, so you just experienced Paul Sherratt's Touching uh, from 1968. Um, I will let you know that I watch it right along with you. So, uh, you know, I've uh, I've seen this film probably 30 or 40 times now, um, but I still still rewatch it every time I assign it um, so, that, so that I can experience this again myself. Um, and this is where we could have a really great conversation about your experiences. Maybe that's something you can go into in discussion boards or something else. But I'll just talk through a little bit of, uh, of mine, you know, um, uh, and also what I think uh, Sherritt is, is sort of trying to do here. Um, I mean, first, as I as I mentioned, I think the sound image relationship is is really critical. Um, this image of the poet uh, with uh, scissors around his tongue, uh, cutting to uh, another shot that looks like he's sort of uh, mutilated himself, uh, along with the words destroy uh, being said over over and over and over again right so you do have this kind of connection to up uh, to violence to mutilation um, this is part of a mandala cycle of sherets that is sort of a, a, a obsessed with these images um, this is being made in and around the vietnam war so i think that those those kinds of connections historical connections can be made but more simply, again, I said, you know, I, I really mean it when I when I say, like, I think that a film like this is asking us to kind of turn off our brain and to just figure out what our experience of a moving image of a film in a darkened room is. And so that sound image relationship is interesting for me in that I I get focused on the word, you know, I'm hearing destroy, destroy. And then suddenly it's turning into his straw, his straw, his straw. And then it's turning into history, history, you know. Um, so for me, it, it keeps sort of transforming, even while the, these sort of repetitive images are in place, to really make us like sink in to our bodies, right? And I think that that's what Sheritz is also doing with the role of the, of the color flicker. I know this is particularly the case if you're watching it in, in a darkened room, but, uh, but the idea of the flicker, right, it is this perceptual thing that uh, sort of does a, a attack your eye. Uh, this becomes a common, kind of a common thing, this flicker effect in uh, an experimental and avant-garde film that really is supposed to locate you uh, in your body, right? And the fact that this film is so bodily as well, showing these uh, these scenes of uh, of potential violence uh, while the while the figure sort of stares directly into the camera, this looks as if uh, something of a of a challenge, but maybe uh, maybe something that further speaks to our own um, body vulnerability, right? The sense. Uh, I mean, I think this does connect to to something like Freed's argument in Art and Objecthood, where this is about the viewer and about the viewer's experience. So as much as we could talk about, yes, this has a fixed camera position, it has a flicker effect, therefore it's an example of structural film. One of the reasons people really got upset with this structural film argument is because it made it just about those formal characteristics and not about the experience that uh, that you have when you watch this, which is a pretty intense experience if you made it all the way through or even if you didn't, right? Because why else do you have the reference in the title, right? This separation of T-O-U-C-H-I-N-G separated by comments, of course, we would just call it touching, but there's uh, almost an algorithmic mathematical structure to, you know, the film's going to end when we get through those letters. Uh, it sort of tells you how it's going to go, right? Um, so there's something that's very, uh, very simple and very direct about this. But uh, nonetheless, it's about this sort of physical act that that film and cinema can take on a form of, uh, of physicality, of tactility, not just to the film strip, but to the audience, to their viewers, to their psychological responses to, the, to this kind of test, right? Um, so I think it's really important to kind of square those two different things or to think, you know, that structural film in watching the films, which is why I why I kind of demand that we watch this whole thing, because it's easy for me to uh, sit here and tell you about the zoom in wavelength and how there's this 45 minute zoom. And that might not sound like the most interesting thing in the world to you, but I can tell you uh, it's very different 
sitting and experiencing that time, that duration, that movement, right? Uh, that fluidity when you're viewing it and when actually there are moments where the color filter changes or when the people enter or exit. Uh, and Sheritz is doing that in a tighter window but uh, but nonetheless revealing that right that um, that the experience of touch uh, that our experience of sight or sound in a theater um, as we encounter moving images uh, that is a new form of touch right that is a new form of uh, of physical interaction with the viewer that when we go to experience a, a film any film right our brains uh, as I said, you know, you can you can turn them off, but they're still responsive. They're still being uh, being touched by what's uh, by what's on screen and by the physical mechanism of what's on screen. It, it maybe is is the case of, of these artists, right? They're thinking about the physicality of the film experience. Whether that's the fact that, I mean, why else do you have flicker? Well, without flicker you can't see moving images, right? If, you're, as, if anyone's ever worked with a, a film projector, uh, it shows at 24 frames a second, but it's, it's actually cutting back and forth between light and dark. If you go see a film in a theater, not digital, like a 35 millimeter film, 16 millimeter, you spend half your time in complete darkness, but the light is flickering so rapidly that you don't notice it. So what does Sheritz do? He makes us notice it. He makes us notice the the experience that we're having when we sit in front of a film projector or sit, yeah, in front looking at a screen, right? We notice that flicker uh, and it becomes this, again, a, a really physical, um, res really physical experience where, where we can't just passively absorb this anymore, right? We're not just passively absorbing this narrative um, or, or this unfolding of letters to form a word, uh, a beginning and end again um, with from the T to the G. Um, but we are uh, we're, uh, we we are experiencing something physically, psychologically that we need to be aware of and that we need to be responsive to. Uh, because what happens if you're not aware and you're not responsive? Well, then you're you're an apathetic clone, just uh, just embracing whatever is is being put out there without doing anything about it, right? You're just absorbing whatever uh, whatever message is being delivered, rather than realizing um, how active uh, how active those messages, those things on screen can be. And so I think Sheritz in touching. Um, hopefully uh, got, got to point towards some of this uh, for, for some of you.